Naruko had been unable to convince the Asakura clan to end their war with the Imperial forces, but few in the clan agreed with their lord's persistence, for the cost of a conflict was falling on them and their fiefs. While this alone was not entirely unusual, and not definite cause to defy their master, the political situation was being affected by the mysterious disappearances of members of the ruling Esakura family, and rumours regarding the cause spread rapidly. And a few of these rumours were actually close to the truth. He ain't gonna get no sympathy for a dead child. That's normal for everyone else, thanks to him. And who's gonna kill their own son just for a chance of getting some pity? That's monstrous. Don't have to kill him, really, though. Just need him to disappear. Yeah, but he's not gonna be able to just say, oh, he was alive all along after he's saying he's dead. <laughs> True that. But then the man himself don't say he's dead. Just everyone who knows anyone. Well, if he's not dead, then what's all that about the big man trying to adopt a new heir? Yeah, I know. I ain't saying they didn't kill him, just that Asakura hasn't actually said nothing about it. And if you don't want to talk about it, it's probably true then. You hear what they found in him armor last night? Not as such. What thing was that then? Let's keep it quiet. But apparently one of the Metsuke found a samurai with a load of new coins, and it was the one who was meant to be on guard the night of the murder. Not all that surprising, is it? How do you think they got into the castle otherwise? Nah, but think about it. New coins. Where are those going to be coming from? They're making new coins down in Omi. Oh, right, I see. Imperial Menton. So those coins was from someone high up enough to get their hands on them early. And it's the sort of thing that happens to rather benefit the young Empress, right? This might blow up big, so don't go spatting it to anyone before it's out there. If she'll kill a ten-year-old, she'll kill you, right? Don't have to tell me. All right. Oh, that's dastardly. Who told you about the coins, anyway? I don't want to say. Look, let's go out. Don't like talking in here. People listening through the walls and what have you. All right, come on, Em. Hello and welcome back to Naruko's Treasure. Right now we've got a battle at Kanazawa in the far north of our territory where the Uesugi are storming the small defending army inside. It looked like they were about to take this place but Naruko's arrival should turn the tide. Her force is now rushing towards the top of the stairs to prevent the enemy gaining access to the castle. They've already breached two of the gates so we need to really hold them here if we can. Naruko has a nice position off to the side up this ramp, somehow missed that Teppo shot there. But now she can use her cavalry pike to attack the enemy from a decent distance. Unfortunately, she is spotted doing this, and an enemy pikeman slashes his way up the ramp, getting hits on Naruko. She's struggling to defend herself. Luckily, she's quickly saved by a couple of her honor bushi and a soldier there coming in to cut down that ambitious enemy. So now Naruko can return to the attack, and this is going to be quite effective. Using a cavalry pike against distracted enemies is very nice because you don't get close enough for them to sort of consider themselves engaging you, so many of them will just allow you to attack them for free. That archer going in for a sword battle with Naruko a terrible choice and finally as the enemy's numbers dwindle we rush down to finish them off with a quick rear attack our own soldiers pretty much doing the work from up those stairs anyway so we just completely annihilated the Uesugi army there I guess we had a numerical superiority and of course the defenders advantage we take from uh, holding this castle made things easier for us so we only lost a few troops among ours and our allied forces the enemy losing over a hundred soldiers and more importantly than that we actually captured great lord Uesugi which will take him out of the the war, so that's going to be a couple of hundred worth of troop capacity that the Usugi no longer have. The Raizoji clan randomly declares war on us after this. They're very far away in the far west of Kyushu, so unlikely to actually show up and do anything, but we'll have to keep an eye out because they can bring forces over if they really want to. Now heading south, we meet back up with Nagako, who's just reported back from her meeting with Great Lord Uesugi, who 
strangely is now in our captivity since then. And basically, Usuki is willing to go to peace with us if we give him over 200,000 mon, an absolutely outrageous deal being offered there, so we have to reject it, probably can't even afford it anyway. So we'll simply continue on. There are lots of reports of enemy forces down in our core territory, so I wanted to come and clear things up. And when I did, I found this guy, Lord Tokuda, one of the Asakura Lords, and it turns out that this guy really hates Lord Asakura for whatever reason, thinks he's some kind of pretender. So basically, this gives us an opportunity to try and get this guy to defect onto our side because we know he's unhappy with his current situation. You can ask him about his personal philosophy and he mentions that he thinks it's better to be the wolf than the lamb, basically indicating to us that this guy values strength and power as the way forward. So now we have to give him a relevant argument that will appeal to his personal philosophy to convince him to defect. I ended up going with just offering him some land in return for joining us. I thought he'll probably take this practical argument and he basically agrees that he'll be much safer and better off on our side of the war than on the Asakura side considering how things have been going so far and pretty much immediately he just says yes I will defect so this is amazing instead of coming and just defeating this guy and removing 40 or so troops from the Asakura side we've gained 40 or so troops onto our own side and of course we have a new lord we will now have to actually go and capture some territory to give it to him. Since we promised him territory, we'll have a stain on our reputation if we don't actually give him something as soon as possible. So ideally, we want to take something from the Asakura to uh, make sure we're damaging the Asakura as much as possible with this whole arrangement. And I decided to go for Ichodani Castle. I'm going to get Tokodai to follow me to add to our force. Ichodani usually isn't that heavily defended. I managed to take out a small Asakura army on the way. And now we're just going to lay the castle under siege. Although we keep getting these reports of attacks from the Asakura and the Usugi across our domain. We really need to get this over with as soon as possible, get Tokuda secured onto our side, and then we'll go and secure our borders against these constant attacks, hopefully with a new advantage, having Tokuda and Ichodani fighting for us. So we'll finish up our preparations and get ready to assault. And what makes you think he won't just stab us in the back rather literally and go back to his master? <laughs> Tokuda is a scoundrel of the highest order, I'll give you that. A man made great by riches and fame earned without merit. Truly the antithesis to your good self. I don't know if you're mocking me or flirting with me, samurai. Pick whichever you prefer, then. The point is, Tokuda's poor reputation may endure betraying a man as hated as Asakura, but to do the same to one as loved as Naruko will invite death by the hands of his very servants, most likely. And is he clever enough to think that far ahead? Certainly. Cleverness and ruthlessness are a common pairing. Speaking of which, look who it is. What? Who's your lucky date this evening? Stay your tongue, you dog! Ah, Lord Osugi, a pleasure to meet you as well. Bet you didn't think you'd end up chained to poor Nagako here when you first met her? Mocking words reveal the shallowness of your character. You should take more care. Now a person who comes out and says something like that must be very clever. And Nagako's ruthlessness is her most precious possession? Truly, this is a match made in heaven. Good luck to you, young lovers. To think that the followers of the esteemed Empress would have this little respect. Truly, we are right to seek your heads. Oh, come now, my lord. We're very courteous most of the time. You are a special exception, though, because you see, our noble lady is rather friendly with another lady of the realm, one Aya no Kata of the Yamanuchi Uesugi line. And we know your real name, Nagao Kagetora going poorly, all because our vassal, the Nagao, were refusing to fight for the clan while I was still heir. They were ready to defect and let the clan fall. Father didn't have a choice. To keep the families joined, he was forced to adopt one of their generals, Kagetora. He was older than me, and more importantly, he was a he. No one cared to support my father in reverting the decision once the war was over. Thus, it never changed. <laughs> the mad woman finds no friends at home, so she spreads her lies elsewhere. Effective, clearly. But right to rule comes from action, not merely lineage. Perhaps your pretender empress has forgotten that in the light of her recent family reunion. You should be quiet, my lord. You have many enemies here. Now who's giving the sage advice? Carry on then, we've got a battle to plan, and fresher villains to worry about. 
Naruko leads her troops for a rapid assault on Ichodani. We need to do this as fast as possible, not just because of the raiding elsewhere in the realm, but because in this battle the enemy have tons of skirmishers who are going to be slamming our forces the whole time we're advancing. We want to storm through this castle as quickly as possible to minimize the amount of skirmishing fire we're going to be taking. Now interestingly, to start things off, the enemy send their guys who were guarding the front gate of the castle to come fight outside, which proves to be a terrible decision because they now basically face our whole army at once. So we just cut them down, perhaps a delaying mechanism, but they would have delayed us more if they'd fought us in the gate. So don't really know what they were thinking, that went pretty well. So now it's time to storm into the first courtyard of the castle and without those defenders, that's easy. Tons of unguarded skirmishes are gonna be cut down as we advance and now, but of course, gonna be helping out with that. But now we're gonna face the harder part of the battle where we need to get up to the second courtyard of the castle and we have to go up this very steep and narrow set of stairs so we're going to be all bunched together and moving slowly perfect targets for the enemy skirmishers who are going to be firing down at us the whole time now we're going to try and thin the numbers out a little bit but we are going to take some pretty serious damage on the way up not really any way to avoid that so we just need to hope our troops can quickly get through the gate and defeat any melee defenders on the other side and we actually pretty much took out all the skirmishers slowly but surely while we were waiting to go up but you can see from the bodies on the floor that clearly we've taken some pretty major losses advancing up these stairs but we have broken through the gate by the looks of things and our troops just surge into the castle and there wasn't all that much left inside but they did have another gatehouse in the final courtyard right at the top just a few enemies inside that courtyard and Nariko extremely cheaply sniping a few of them through the bars inside of a window on one of their sub tent shoes but anyway we're going to go up the stairs to investigate the final defenses of the enemy and by the time I arrived there was actually nothing left our troops were cheering for it as victory so there we go the castle has been taken moderately high losses i say moderate our losses in terms of killed were okay but we lost nearly a hundred wounded meaning our force is now basically incapacitated but of course the entire enemy army was wiped out and we were able to rescue loads of prisoners who were being held in the tent shoe here so we can convince a number of those guys to join our force so rapidly our numbers will swell right back up taking the choice troops there and of course the final thing we need to do here is actually give the castle to lord token on the whole point of this has now been achieved so hopefully he will be cemented as a lord of our faction now with this territory given to him i actually have too many troops in my party right now as a result of rescuing all those prisoners so i'm going to give a load of them over to the castle's defense since it is a little bit dodgy and i don't need to shore it up and even though my party limit is higher than the amount of troops i have now there's a soft limit due to party morale which basically means i can only have something like 150 troops at a time so after that i'm going to head back and now try and deal with all these raiding forces we've heard so much about. Heading down towards Nara, we see two Asakura armies. One of them is Great Lord Asakura, who I was surprised to see because I was pretty sure he was actually inside the castle that we just took. So he's basically come back immediately and he is, again, not really willing to go to peace with us except for outrageous payments, which we are not going to offer. Luckily, he doesn't really have any troops since we defeated him so recently, so we just run over his army and defeat him again, and then move on to the more important business of attacking Lord Kitabatake, who has an army similar in size to ours, so it's time to take the field and face a more decisive battle to clear things up in our core regions. This battle was relatively easy, though, of course, as it tends to be, because we have such superior terrain, and the enemy's advance is going to be so hampered by our skirmishing fire that really, by the time the battle actually starts, we're going to have a big numerical advantage. Advantage. They did the usual attempt at a cavalry attack, Nariko, swinging around to the back of those cavalry to help take them out. They don't last very long at all. We do need to get a move on because we're about to be crushed in front of the enemy's infantry as they hit our line, so we'll just dodge around behind our troops and allow that fight to carry on. Nariko is going to come over to the right flank to join the cavalry who are just waiting to charge, so we'll use this opportunity to swing around and smash the enemy's army as it engages ours, but as you can see there wasn't very much here and I immediately found out why. We come over this little hill and we see the entire enemy army is actually just in retreat. They didn't even really join the fight, so that was easy enough and now Nariko and the cavalry will just rush into the retreating ranks and cut down countless enemy troops which will demolish their army in general so let's take a look at the results we lost only three troops probably to skirmish fire the enemy losing basically everything over 100 killed a very good show 
and we have the chance to capture Lord Kitapitake, so we will take that to deny one more lord to our enemies. Now, all of a sudden, we get a peace deal from the Rezoji clan, which is nice, and then, immediately after that, a peace deal from the Date clan, so something has suddenly made these two powers at the extreme west and east ends of the country suddenly decide they're not interested in this war happening in the middle of the country, which is logical enough, but if they were going to declare war, it doesn't really make any sense that they would very quickly just go to peace without doing anything. Anyway, you can see all the villages around my southwestern territories have been destroyed, and I'm looking for an enemy to uh, try and find who actually did this. We get more news of raids up at Azuchi, which is luckily near where I ended up after searching for the enemy. I actually find the Iosugi clan forces are nearby and get more news of them attacking at Kitanasho. I didn't know where that was at first, you can see me looking around for it, it's up by Ichodani Castle. Basically our entire territory has been heavily compromised, many of our villages have been destroyed, especially in our core. I'm sure you know why I've summoned you. I know enough to say that you should have summoned your daughter, not me. Don't pretend that this isn't your responsibility, General. Do you even know the extent of our losses? I know them. Then why do so many still wonder where the Empress's Grand Army is? You are meant to keep Nariko under control, keep our people safe. I have tried, Your Majesty. Nariko Dano is one who looks only to the future. She is quite accustomed to life on the front lines, so much so that she in fact desires it. And I must say that it was your own order that we tried to stop her from caring about what the people think of her. Perhaps that is to blame for her continued adventuring. You are to blame, General. You were responsible for our forces, and you agreed that you would keep Nariko's inexperience out of the matter. With respect, Your Majesty, she has achieved so much by her own instinct, and learned so much from I and all her friends, that it is not fair to call her inexperienced. The people of the land disagree. Many note how at least under the Miyoshi they weren't so terrorized at all times by raiders, and Nariko has spread much talk of how she will prevent such things. Now they see it is only talk. The situation has changed. For the Empress, the situation does not change unless she wills it. Of course it's a lie to us, but to the people this is and must be true. That is their hope. A great power to end the madness. Now to ensure that hope remains, we must all work hard to cover up the sour reality of it all. And I don't like to see you failing, indulging in your infatuation with my daughter by letting her spoil her chances, while I work so hard to make real changes. Much was risked to secure these peace treaties. Infatuation, you say. Duty is a foreign concept to you, perhaps. And you bring up the peace. I was going to ask Well, how don't. We... Look, I don't think that you are a bad general. But nor have I seen much chance for you to prove otherwise. It may be wise for you to convince Nariko to give military command up, for a while at least. She won't do it, and neither you nor I have the authority to make her. Authority it doesn't matter. What does such an ordinary word mean these days? We have a responsibility to ourselves and to the land. I know you understand that more than most samurai. To live by mere principles is the greatest folly of intellect, and it is people that realize this, people like us, that gain the power to make a difference in this world. So you would do well to listen more to me, more to yourself, and less to her. I gather you've put much thought into this topic. Please, allow me to do the same. Now we're over near Kyoto, and we've got some big forces to take out. The Uesugi have penetrated multiple armies right into our core, right outside the capital, so it's time to start trying to strategize to see how we can take them out. And the main thing we need to do is get Lord Ashida here into the battle with us, who happen to be patrolling around the area. So that will give us a lot of numbers to play with now, well over 300 troops, giving us sufficient strength to overwhelm the first of the Uesugi armies here. With about double their numbers, it's a night battle though, so a lot of our skirmishing troops 
troops going to struggle. I'm going to run our army off the road here and try and form up on this tiny hill just beside it. Really can't really tell what's going on. Our men are trying to fire at the enemy and I heard some sounds coming from right at the end of the line so I made the relatively long journey to go investigate what it is and it looked like the enemy cavalry had come in to attack our cavalry and as I went to investigate, bang, we just take out an en enemy lord who had apparently arrived to oversee the battle and was completely on his own. So we now sweep back in to help out with that cavalry engagement. Going to be quite easy, although slightly handicapped by the fact that using a cavalry pike while stationary at close quarters is actually very hard. So now with the enemy's cavalry taken out, I'm going to try and get my cavalry back behind our battle lines before the enemy's army actually arrives. Of course, their cavalry was well ahead of their main army, ruining their potential. And we just about managed to get back through. And then a battle takes place in front of us where we can't really see what's going on. I eventually order everyone to just charge out and try to exploit the fact that the enemy's formation is so loose right now that we're basically going to be overcoming single enemies one at a time and in fact the enemies are now just routing away so that's the end of their infantry their skirmishes were still going though and there they are hiding in the darkness Narco rides forward and slashes into their line and just like that all of the skirmishes turn around and start to flee Narco is going to be followed by cavalry and infantry so perhaps the right decision there but a very bold move from the Empress still though that's going to be the end of those skirmishes as they attempt to escape and and that, of course, is going to be the end of that entire army. Very good show. We managed to not lose any troops, although our ally Ashida lost six. The enemy losing about 150 troops. Overall, an extremely good exchange with the Uesugi. But that's not the end of it, of course. They have another army nearby. But with Ashida on our side, we can now completely overwhelm that remaining force. They've got over 100 troops, but that still leaves us with triple their numbers, easily enough to just smash through them. And Naraka is going to go out to lead the cavalry again in this battle. First, I was on the wrong side of our army, so I went across the face of the enemy, cutting down one guy there on the way. Now I can join our cavalry waiting on the flank as the enemy's infantry charge comes in to fight with my lines. Once they're all busy and engaged, we'll be able to sweep them off the field. Here come the cavalry. Our cavalry detachment's now gotten very large because we've captured so many samurai from around the place. So now we come into to just annihilate the enemy. Some of them start to withdraw the second they see us coming in. Again, probably the right decision in this situation, and the ones who don't withdraw are going to be quickly overcome by both our cavalry and the fact our infantry can now advance into the enemy as well. A few skirmishes as ever, still trying to fight, not going to last very long, especially with cavalry now having nothing between them and those poor skirmishes. So after that, I finally came back to Kyoto because I want to try once again to see if the Uesugi are willing to go to peace. Now that we've just defeated a couple of their armies, it might have changed their opinion on things. So once again, we need to ask Nagako to go and negotiate with Lord Uesugi about getting a truce and seeing what conditions he would accept. I don't know what exactly will happen when he sees you again, but there isn't anyone else I can trust with this. He did not appear to like me but he did not appear to like anyone, so that may be of no consequence. Well, if you think that he won't listen to you, we could try to persuade my mother to do it. No, your majesty. What's the matter? Sorry, your majesty. Your mother is poorly viewed by the Uesugi. You are sure? I have heard some rumors to that effect, although that was with the Oda and Asakura, actually. It would not be appropriate to speak on those topics, your majesty. If you think I'll be offended, then you needn't worry. It is dangerous gossip, and that's why I want to hear it. You clearly know something, Nagiko. I can order you to tell me if I need to. <sighs> Kogomasko is hated by the samurai lords. The people do not mind her, but they don't know her so well. Hated? Because of me? No, your majesty, no. She is... They say she used to be... Dishonorable. And what does that mean exactly? I don't truly know, your majesty, but I believe she is thought to have been responsible for the fighting 20 years ago, but I do not know. <sighs> Interesting. Thank you, Nagako, for saying what you could. I wonder what she would say if I asked her about that. She doesn't seem to be dishonorable to me, not now at least. It was a long time ago, your majesty. Yeah, people find it hard to forget things, I guess. Well, we need to focus for now. Uesugi must be convinced to end the war. And if anyone can do it, it's you. Is there anything else you need before you go? Uh, yes. Can you tell me about the mint in Umi? Mint? What do you mean? 
The new coins are being pressed in Umi. Did you arrange that? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't really take that much involvement in the details. I will, though, once all this is over. But why do you ask? Do you think you'll need more money? No, sorry, Your Majesty. I am wasting your time. Please await my return. Next, I wanted to head north to go back to Kanazawa and see how things were doing around there. But even on the way, we get more news that we are being attacked back in our core. This time, Kobe, a village to the west there, is under attack. It seems that wherever we go, we're always going to be attacked somewhere else. We just can't cover all the bases with so many enemies marauding around the place. More news of attacks even on the way up towards Kanazawa itself, which you can finally see. This time, it's a Braki under attack, which is actually one of Nariko's personal villages. Definitely something she is supposed to be saving but since I'd already come most of the way up here I wanted to check the situation if I could because there had been reports of enemy armies in this area and as we approach the city we see there's a massive Usugi army attacking it right now over 600 troops and something like 30 men left alive inside the city to defend it. It's literally about to fall and Naruko, although she brings over 150 of her own troops, won't be able to stop an army of that size from taking it. I sat here for quite a long time and considered whether I should at least try it, but the loss of the entire party, even if this was a successful battle, would be very difficult to come back from, so I ended up simply heading away. We will head south, Kanazawa will now fall to the Uesugi as a result, and many of the villages around it will go with it. We immediately see that most of the Usugi's army isn't in the garrison, so it must have moved out right away, so they may actually just be coming right for us again. But whatever's happening, we need to go back to our core because we are under attack there. We just saw the message saying that Abraki has now been completely destroyed by the raiding forces and the villagers nearby will fall as well immediately. There we go, Kamioka under attack by the same army. So we're going to rush over to the west to try and deal with these guys. On the way, Nagako catches up with us again. She's already gone and found Great Lord Uesugi. And although he seems like he wants to be at war with us, despite the fact he's at war with lots of other people, he does say that he'll agree to a truce for a slightly less outrageous sum of money than he offered last time so things are going in the right direction but are still very far from coming to a conclusion and of course we've now lost Kanazawa so taking a piece now would leave us down on the deal but there's a message there saying Ichodani is now under attack by the Usugi and we can't really stop them from taking it very bad news more news of villages being raided basically the bad news is coming in one thing after another we just need to really really clean things up the pressure is very large right now first Lord Ogasawar of the Asakura is going to go right down. He has only 40 troops so he can't do anything against Nariko's party. We're just going to take this an absolute rush. Going to join the cavalry in a sudden charge against Ogasawara's party. Not much he can do to stop this. His troops will be able to put up a little bit of a fight because we are using no tactics at all but basically they were overrun without problem. Moved back over to Keihuku where there's another minor lord with just a few troops who again just need to run over and the problem we're going to face is that even a tiny army with 10 or so men is enough to destroy a village even though it poses no threat militarily so as long as there are lots of lords aligned against us it doesn't matter if they have barely any territory or strength it's still going to be a big problem there we see the cavalry going in to clear up the job that Narako just started taking out these enemies in a rage induced personal quest against the enemy but after all this the stress has built to quite a high level Narako is going to head to Kyoto where she'll have to discuss and plan what we're going to do to deal with the fact that under her rule the land is in more chaos than ever before the momentum of the Imperial Army had run out, and with it the wave of enthusiasm that had the population fully behind the Imperial Restoration began to wane. Most draining of all was the building civilian death toll in the Imperial territories, with settlements too poor to be protected by fortifications being overrun by opportunistic minor lords, a fate that proved to be far worse than being raided by the bandits in the era before Nariko's arrival. For Nariko herself, the pressure was reaching breaking point. The expectations placed on her, by herself and others, were proving to be impossible to meet. Thank you so much for watching, and as things seem to be getting worse and worse, Nariko may be able to find some hope in the machinations of her mother in the next episode of Nariko's Treasure.